I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Systemic Racism. Woke Wednesday takes on systemic racism. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass it on the faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications. Get the app everywhere, all platforms. Higher Things Lutheran. Search it. You'll find an app there. Donate. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things the best orga Christian youth organization on the planet. Keeps us passing that faith to the next generation. Keeps us rolling. And our kids need this gospel in these dark times. So Wednesdays gives us the... Erica Jacoby, she is the executive director of Higher Things, and also a former high school teacher, which means she's woke literate. Wait. That's not... Thank that's, you. It's not a good way to... Still confident in how this video is going to go. All right, Erica, systemic racism. Let's, let's get rolling, okay? What is systemic racism, and how does that differ from just racism? Um, well, I think racism is uh, certainly a big topic right now in common culture, which is why we're addressing it. Um, uh, systemic racism, also known as institutional racism, is a form of racism that is embedded as normal practice uh, within a society or within an organization. Um, and it can lead to such issues as discrimination in criminal justice, employment and housing, health care, uh, political power, education, among other issues. So I think we all kind of know that racism is sort of, uh, you think of it more of an individual terms, right? That you think um, one race is better uh, than another. So the systemic angle is, um, is much more broad. Um, and in fact, uh, the uh, Merriam-Webster Dictionary actually even updated its de definition recently of racism to sort of uh, reflect this awareness. Um, so it, that would include a doctrine or a political program based on the assumption of racism and designed to execute its principles um, or a political or social system founded on racism. So that's, that's more the idea of systemic racism, if that makes sense. So, Erica, can you give us an example of syst uh, systemic racism in our culture? Sure. Um, uh, there, are, there are lots of different examples that I could give you. And in fact, I would, um, I would, I would say look, look some of them up if you, if you want more information on this. I'm just going to give you one today. Um, and the one that I'm going to give you today is called redlining. Um, now, redlining was a practice um, by many banks in America that actually refused mortgages to people of color in urban areas. And that prevented them from buying a home or getting a loan to even renovate their home if they were a homeowner in very specific uh, neighborhoods. And the practice um, that was at one time permitted by the U.S. government um, among those companies, those loan companies, um, began in the 1930s and took place in a lot of the um, uh, America's most populated cities like uh, Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, Tampa, and even um, in other large cities with large minority populations. So the actual term redlining refers to the maps that these companies drew that outlined those areas um, with actual red. And you can find those maps online now or actually in the National Ar Archives. So it was, uh, and the practice was actually um, outlawed. Um, became illegal in 1968 with a little thing called the Fair Housing Act that I think a lot of people are familiar with. Um, and then another one, another act that was um, slightly less well known, the 1977 Community Reinvestment Act. Um, and those new laws banned discrimination based on someone's race. Um, so when the person is, was trying to rent or buy a home, um, as well as pay for a mortgage. So it made those practices illegal. Um, and including predatory um, interest rates or fees. So now, despite that, there's some evidence that this problem continues, and even um, there's even a new practice that is called reverse redlining, which is when banks, uh, 
practice predatory lending in the same neighborhoods that were once marked as off limits for borrowers. So for example, in the years leading up to that 2008 um, housing crash that we experienced in the United States, um, mortgage lenders gave risky subprime loans, including ones that were no doc and then like the big balloon payment loans on low income borrow borrowers. And many of those, uh, many communities in the cities in cities like Detroit and Newark have yet to recover from that. Um, and you can see where those practices would have the effect of keeping poor and marginalized communities from participating in that American dream, um, which is simply the ideal um, by which equality of opportunity is available to any and all Americans, uh, regardless of you know their their race. So um, that's an example of of um, systemic racism. So um, as I said, um, look up some of the other ones to kind of see um, uh, other examples of those things. But that one's a pretty well established one. Um, my question for you now, Pastor Borger, I get to answer like the easy kind of historical definition in terms. I get to ask you the hard questions. Um, so you and I are actually a part of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Um, and that is a, is a church body in the United States, which is actually one of the least racially diverse church bodies in America. Um, and my question to you is, what is the Christian's takeaway? Um, how can we love God and serve our neighbor, all of our neighbors? Um, those of us that are part of the institutional church, right, the church at large, and then just individually in our lives, in our local and immediate lives. You're in the hot seat now, my friend. Well, um, first off, we have to confess that sinners, like sinners that look like them more than sinners that don't, it's, it's, it's just part of the fall that we are um, inclined to uh, uh, sort of look down on others. So we've, we're going we're gonna to confess that. I think we're going to find a problem with labeling a whole system as racist and thereby being able to call the whole system evil. Um, there, there may be racist people inside the church in different systems. When you label the whole system, you create a universe where the only way to not be racist is to destroy the system. It, it is a, um, the other thing is, is to, to take that mentality is to look for sin in your neighbor and find it no matter what. So it, like, it doesn't matter whether or not the, the, the institution itself is racist. Um, I'm sorry, the people inside the institution are racist because when you label the, 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 the institution racist, then everybody involved in that institution is themselves racist. And th that is a, a, a slope that ends poorly. And to connect original sin with systematic racism is also not really, I mean, yes, every system is fallen, every system is full of sin, but to judge people based upon their group, the, the groups that are involved in, that's problematic. This whole thing is very, very problematic. It creates a universe where where we can call people a sin, even though that, that sin exists, whether they're committing that sin or not, that's a problem. Inside the church, just because we are in a church body that is not that diverse, does not mean that the system itself, the doctrine itself of our church body, isn't is 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 evil. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So like yes, like I am. like we have to run back to the answer to this question, which is Christ died for all. Christ died for people who look like us. Christ died for people who don't. Christ took on all our flesh. So whether you sort of imagine Jesus as uh, a, a Palestinian, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a Jew in Palestine in 30 AD, beard and all, 
or you want to picture him looking more like you. Um, I don't think he's he. I don't think he has a problem with that because in Christ, there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free man. So like when I served in uh, a fieldwork church where I the, all the pictures of Jesus was black, I was okay with that because I think Christ wants us to think of him not in terms of what color of his skin, but that he was for all of us. And if we keep that um, that gospel in our midst, then it doesn't really it's it's in the end it's not going to matter the the, the the diversity in our actual institution because our doctrine is going to be uh, is going to be against that. Does that make sense? It How does. about doing so on that? You're not you're not you're not saying that uh, that racism doesn't exist within an institution. You're not excusing no. it. If I no, if I may no, no. if I may say I, so, um, would it prevent us from taking a hard look at ourselves though, and perhaps thinking about? Um, I mean, I know, I know our city has a lot of mission work outside the United States. And I would say, um, um, there's a lot of, um, uh, there's Lutheranism reflected in Africa. It's in, it's in Latin America. Um, but could we ask ourselves the question, why are our congregations not more diverse? Are we sharing the gospel? It's not, it's not hurtful. It's not harmful to do that. It, it begs the question. I mean, we can ask, we, okay, so we can ask the question. And we need to ask the question. And we need to ask the question on a regular basis. Um, and we and we need to sort of take a hard look at ourselves all the time. That's true. And we need to confess our sins. So when I was when I was a pastor in Texas, and they handed me the plates, and we had a a, a black couple that had, uh, that was visiting, and they hand me the plates and say, Pastor, uh, the the black people here are actually Lutherans. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, and I like, covered my mic and I'm like, they might have been before you opened your mouth. Mm, um, right. I mean, we have a lot to confess and a lot to get forgiveness for. And the church itself isn't as clean as the wind driven snow all by herself. Um, she is in Jesus. But, but she yeah. is in Jesus. <laughs> exactly. And like when we start to, to sort of say, your church is, you can't say something because of the color of your skin, or you can't preach something because you're not the right color, or you can't be something because you're not the right, you know what I mean? We're down a slope that ends in the same sin that we're trying to avoid. We got to remember, people who suffer um, oppression, which is sinful, their inclination when they come out of that is to oppress others. So like we were slaves in Egypt, so we enslave other people. We, um, we were, we were mistreated. So we mistreat others. We didn't like people's power that they used. And so we, 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 we sort of pushed down others. The best route to go, I think is to let the gospel have its way with us as a church body. And then we won't care. You know what I mean? Then we won't care. We're going to constantly be preaching that Christ died for all. And that means he died for me too. And that meant for you too. And that we don't have time or energy for any message which doesn't have him dying for all. Jew, Greek, slave, free man, male, free male. Does that make sense? Because, because Christianity is anti-slavery. Let's be clear on that. I mean, the only reason why slavery is allowed in Christianity because Christianity's job is not to change culture. All right. But when you have any instance, or right. Our governments, any instance of slavery in the scripture or racism or, or dealing with people like in the new Testament, dealing with people based upon their ethnicity is squashed. Peter and the Jews, Judaizers and Paul and my personal favorite Philemon and um, and Onesimus. Onesimus, the slave, is sent back by Paul. The escaped slave is sent back to his, his master, Philemon, with the instructions basically to free him. So now he's going to come back to you more than just property. He's going to come back to you as a brother. You know, which is which is which is yeah. what Christianity is all about. Let's let's like sort of break out of love, hating our neighbor based upon something with them, rich, poor, you know what I mean? And let's remember that Christ died for all and is in all. 
Follow comment. Uh, last comments. Thirty seconds. Um, I think what I've heard you say is um, that we are free in Christ and we're free to love our neighbor. Um, that they're um, the only. Uh, slavery the Christian really can be concerned with is um, slavery to sin and death from the devil, um, and that we're free from that, right? Uh, we're free from that in Christ. I mean, Jesus died, right. and we're free from that. Right. So, but we, we, we were concerned uh, we, about we're, we're concerned about we slavery concerned, and, and, we and like human trafficking. We are concerned about that, right? Right. 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 But right. but we're we but we're Thank not you. going to be the people who 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 do those things. We need to repent of that. I'm with you. Correct. Got it. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying what I was saying. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I think as Christians, um, you know, I think there was uh, no finer Christian than Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I think uh, I think emulating his love and service to uh, to his neighbors, to his community is a great way to go. A great example for us. Um Yeah. Erica Jacoby is the executive director of Higher Things, the face that runs the place. In our little Lutheran, Lutheran youth organization, Erica, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Let's uh, let's remember the gospel. Let's remember the gospel in all of this. Let's remember the gospel. Christ died for all. The world is fallen, and in a fallen world, they're going to have bad, evil people. Uh, let's not look for that sin and 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 impose it on others. But let's be aware of our own sin and therefore be repentant and want this gospel for all. Thor and I will see you tomorrow. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short.